Hey everybody and welcome to episode 6 of The Revolution with me James from the Football Manager Wiz Kids. Now today's episode is a live comp, a wait to Aberdeen, sure to be a tough game, always at a tough top opposition. But before that we're going to get into some January transfer window business and update you on the games since the last episode and the last defeat against Celtic. So only two players have come in for us in this window and that is Andres Pereira who is on loan from Manchester United. As you can see he's valued at 7.5 million and his attributes are very very good. And in this Scottish division, I hope you'll do a job for me through to the end of the season. He is out of contract at Manchester United and inquired about a permanent be deal, but his wage demand is far too high for me. But I understand he's a good player and he will need a huge wage to be persuaded to come to Scottish football. But he's played five appearances, did score on his debut, but only a 6.82 average in that time. As I say, he did score on his debut. But hopefully we'll get a few more goals out of him in his time at the club. The other sign I've made is someone who almost close joined Celtic in real life maybe a year ago, Rivaldo Coetzee. The football manager did a documentary on how they send real life scouts around the world and he was a showcase in that documentary. He came in from Mamelody Sundowns, he's South African, 22, got 23 cats for the national team and he looks very very good. He cost me £600,000 and he went straight to a value of £3.9 million. Happy to be a rotational player and he is signed on a two and a half year contract. One sticky thing is though, I signed him late in the window and he doesn't have a work permit so we'll have to send him out on loan probably at the start of next season for 120 days before we can look to use him in the future window, hopefully we can recall him and play him in my team. But he does look very, very good. As I say, the work permit problem is a problem. But 3.9 million valued now, he's certainly going to sell for profit if we can't or should decide not to use him. So there was quite a lot of sales going out in this window and first up 1.4 million I believe was John Flanagan. Now he was on a value, sorry, a wage of £12,000. I've sold a lot of players in this window due to the big wages that they're on and underperforming in the Scottish League. And he's a good player but he was never going to get a game in front of James Tavernier or Bora Bas Barisic in my team. So I felt £12,000 to sit on the bench, 1.4 million to Leeds United, we'll take advantage and we'll take that. Next player going out was Lee Wallace, long term server for Rangers, only played for Rangers and Hearts in his career, Scottish international. He got let go to Nottingham Forest for free, he was on £12,000 a week also. He was due to leave on a free contract in the summer anyway, so it was a case of offering him a new contract or let him go for nothing. 31, I felt like £12,000 again, for the same reason as Flanagan, wasn't really going to get a game at either full back position, so he left on a free contract. Next up leaving was Graham Dorans, I think we got just under one and a half million for him, 31 years old and again, simple reason on that high high wage, £14,000 he was on so I thought I'll cash in, take the money, again he wasn't really playing in the middle of the park anyway with us having the likes of Ryan Jack there, Pereira now on loan, McTominay on loan and other players in that position. Carlos Pena returned in January on from being away on loan, he was on £24,000 so pretty simple like guys. Ask him if he wants to leave for a zero. Club came in, Lubos, B-U-A-P, came in for him and he was let go for free. £24,000 for a player that was not getting a game. So, glad to see the back of him. Next up, going out of the club was Jack Anik for £200,000. This was to Tottenham, I'm sure he's just going to be a backup there. As you can see, he's only played in the FA Cup for Tottenham, I think, as you can see down the bottom. Again guys, this is just a case of getting wages off. We don't need him as backup and we don't need him as number one. We've got Alan McGregor and Robbie McCrory who I'm potentially looking to make the number one over the next two, three seasons and depending on how long we play this save. But he's good enough to be backup so Jack Anik wasn't really needed. A loan move sees young Jack Thompson go out on loan. A good player, got some good mental stats. Physically he's okay. Well, he's alright. Technically he's not very good but for... A central defensive midfielder, he's going to go out on loan to Wraith Rovers and look to get some experience. The final one to go and be sold, this one is kind of one I was sort of on the edge with. This is the reason I bought Pereira in, because I let go Scott Arfield, age 30 years old, probably in his prime. He plays on the left of midfield and I really wasn't looking to play him there, I was wanting to play him in the middle. But just under £6 million, I let him go and he was on a wage of, I think it was... 13 or 14 thousand pounds per week if you look at his wage right now guys i think that saudi arabia is at um 77 thousand pounds it just shows you the firepower and the money power they have in this game so this one could potentially come back to backfire on me 
but I was pleased to get the money in for them. So guys, that's all transfer windows gone, tr sorry, transfer window activity and players coming and gone and that puts our budget which can go up to around 10 million pounds, so 9.6 million pounds if I want to bring in, but it's going to be a case of looking to bring in players now for next season or keep that money in the bank and then next window see if we get any more added on top of it and then do some more business, maybe sell a few more players, bring some other ones in. As I say, season two is when you really start to develop your own team. So guys, since that defeat against Celtic 3-1 at home, we played two friendlies, of course, there is a break in the December over January period. So we did play Utrecht, we beat them 3-0, and Beveren, we beat them 7-0, but moving on from that doesn't really mean a great deal. We played Kamalik in the league, as you'll notice guys, I'm not going into detail on these ones, I just want to get fired into the episode, fired on to the live comp today against Aberdeen, because it's a big game. So as I say, Kamalik 2-1 away from home, goals coming from Andres Pereira on his debut, and Ryan Jack. We then played Aberdeen in the cup, Eros Grazeda scored in the 90 second minute to take the replay and believe it or not guys I had 41 shots 20 on target in that game Aberdeen had 4 shots total 1 on target and we just scored at the death to take it to a replay disappointing 0-0 away to Livingston we just beat St Mirren 2-0 at home an own goal and an Ollie Burke goal also and we just beat Aberdeen in that Scottish Cup 4th round replay 2-1 away from home we went down to 10 men after 10 minutes Ryan Jack was sent off for a straight red Alfredo Morelos who went around 10 games without a goal has got the double we scored late on Aberdeen also went down to 10 men on the 75th minute through Chris Baird being sent off we're about to play Aberdeen again for the third time in the last 5 games it's in the league so we're about to crack on and get right into that. As you can see in the Scottish Cup 5th round, we have Queen of the South away from home. See this how the league table stands so far. As you can see, Celtic, as you'd expect, at the top 23 games won. They've lost one, 84 goals scored, 22 conceded, and they're on 69 points. 15 points clear of ourselves and Aberdeen, who are tied on 54 points. Looking at us, we've scored 54 goals and conceded 26. We've lost four games, we're drifting games on 117. As I said guys, we were never really going to beat Celtic in the first team, with it not being my team at all, but compete was the main thing and we are currently second in the league. Today is a big one, hopefully we can pull away three points ahead of Aberdeen as we've got a slightly better goal difference than them. Everybody else is trailing away with Hearts in fourth and Hibs in fifth, that's the way you'd expect the top five to finish in Scotland or certainly not in particular in that order, but that's the best five teams in that division. Rock bottom are Livingston and Motherwell tie. As you see, I just got a 0-0 away to Livingston, which is very, very disappointing. So Aberdeen away, Aberdeen lining up 4-2-3-1. Luis Fuentes, Hoban, McKenna. McKenna's a player that I think I'm going to put all my eggs in one basket and potentially try to sign him next year. Maybe to partner Goldson or Katic, I'm not sure, but certainly have a bit more competition in the central defensive area because Gareth McCauley is just back up for me. Gleeson and Captain Shinny, Shinny's a very good player. They're pretty good going forward. Mackay Steven, a lot of trickery amongst them. James Wilson, the striker playing on the right. And Ferguson in behind Cosgrove up top. We are playing the 4 2 2 2. McGregor. Barisic, Goldson, Katic and Tavria, that's a solid, usual back five. Ryan Jack, hopefully he can hold his temper in this game and not get sent off. Although in that sending off in the cup, we did appeal it and we did win that appeal. Andres Pereira in the middle with him. On the left, Middleton on the right, Burke who have got a lot of assists between them. Up top, the dynamic duo, the goal scoring machines are Morelos and Lafferty. So here we are guys, just going to get straight into it. Go out there and impress me. Big game today, Aberdeen away, second versus third and a chance to pull away by three points into that second spot, that spot that we've really set our sights on, the spot where we really thought that was something we could achieve. Middleton, Lafferty, Middleton, oh and a sharp shot, three minutes in the game for Middleton goes wide of Joe Lewis's post. Seven minutes in here. Barisic. Barisic again. Puts it straight in. And it's Burke and it's straight over and looked like some defensive confusion there. And Oliver Burke with his eight goal season and an assist by Borna Barisic. As you can see, comes straight back to him when he's throwing. And McKenna looked out of 
no man's land, the goalkeeper not have a clue what's going on and Bark gets in there at the back post to slot away for number 8 of the season for the on loan man from West Bromwich Albion would love to make him permanent but I don't know if it's going to be possible he's probably going to cost too much for me it's quite hard to persuade quality Premier League or Championship players to come to Scottish football a lot of people don't see it as a high enough level Morelos back in amongst the goals last game Milton, Morelos and it's a penalty. Graham Shinney has brought down Morelos. He missed a penalty in his last game, Morelos. So will he score this one? And he does, Alfredo Morelos, with a third in the last two. And his 19th goal of the season. And we take a 2-0 lead here. Slots it to the bottom right-hand corner. And that man is picking up a bit of form. Bright start from the boys here. In the opening 20 minutes. Aberdeen unable to match us. Tavernier. And it's, oh, Lafferty. So we're doing quite well, nothing to complain about. And it's Tavernier. Oh, straight in the arms of Lewis, we're absolutely controlling it so far. Although the stats don't really suggest that we are, but it's been all us in terms of the highlights. We have changed things to tactically, sorry, recently. We've changed a few things. We could go into that in the next episode, but I think we've sort of changed the whole positive attitude every single game almost to have more balance and then we'll see in the game how we'll change that up but yeah we have changed a few things and I guess I can go into that in the next episode guys 35 minutes gone here possession in our favour and hopefully we can hold on till the halfway mark Yellow card for Graham Shinney, James Tavernier is also on a yellow card. Hopefully we won't concede here or just before half time. But another one would really make up for it. Ryan Jack and it's Mackay Steven pulls away in Cosgrove into Shinney who's on a yellow card. He pulls wide. Fuentes, Gleason, Ferguson, Mackay Steven are straight into the arms of Alan McGregor. No worries here. And we're going to go into half time. Hopefully, surely, 2 0 up and keeping a clean sheet thus far. It's been a solid performance. So far from the lads. We're just going to keep it the same guys. Do not need to do anything else. Certainly not yet. I'm happy with how things have gone. Hopefully we don't get too complacent. As you see earlier in the season when we're 3-0 up at half time. We got too complacent and we drew 3 all with the struggling Dundee. Well at the time they were struggling. Gleeson, Forrester, Cosgrove, Gleeson. McKenna and McGregor picks up so I'm hoping guys we can really compete with Celtic more next season as I say I'm a firm believer on Football Manager the second season is your team everything is yours there's no excuses for not performing in season 2 first season you're picking up somebody else's team there's a lot of players you can't sell there's a lot of players you don't want you don't want to leave the club a lot of high earners so yeah you've got to sort of work around what you have Goldson Burke so we're just going to make a sub here, we're going to bring on Dapo Mabudi for Kyle Lafferty. Lafferty's actually dipped in a bit of form. Remember guys at the start where it was Morello started with a bang, then it was Lafferty started with a bang, replacing him almost. And then just as, a, and it's a shot from Andreas there, and just as Lafferty started to die off in the last four or five games in terms of goals, Alfredo Morello started to come alight. We can't seem to get them both. Oh, that's a goal from Aberdeen. We can't sort of get them both free scoring. At the same time, they're always scoring individually. But that's a good goal there from Tommy Hoban. Now, we're just going to have to have a look at the team instructions here. So I'm going to stop the overlapping. I'm going to go short passing, slow it down a bit, dribble less, a bit more disciplined. Just just keep the ball, basically, is what I'm saying. So we'll go back into here with 20 minutes remaining. I think we will make another change, we'll get some fresh legs on. Middleton's not had the best of games. I'm going to bring on Ryan Kent. 2-1 here, hopefully we don't let this go. Aberdeen have got right back into this here. The on loan Liverpool man comes on, spent much of the season injured. So it's a chance for him to impress in the last 20 minutes or so. Shea Logan. Shinny. Andreas Burke. Mabudi, Andres, Jack, 
back to Andreas. Burke give it away to Tavernier. Burke, and it's another penalty. Burke has been brought down and there's a chance for Alfredo Morales surely to wrap the game up. Come on Alfredo. And he, because it's saved right down the middle and he misses a second penalty in the space of three. Dif oh, really disappointing there was a chance to wrap up the game. Morelos, out wide. Barisic, Morelos again. Pereira, likes a long shot. Kent, Jack, Morelos out wide, should be in the box. Jack, Tavernier, Kent on the opposite flank. Tavernier again, and it's out for a corner. Ah, that was the game in the palm of our hands there, and Morelos never makes it easy in his pullover. He's a frustrating man, is Alfredo Morelos. Shinny, seven minutes to go here. Just going to go defensive. Surely can't lose this. We're going to bring on the ball winning midfielder, Koulibaly, for Andres Pereira. I'm just going to change him to a ball winning midfielder. Hopefully, hopefully we can see out this game and our big, big three points on show. Two minutes to go. The substitution has been made. In the remaining minutes. Four minutes will be added on. That's plenty of time to get a goal. Koulibaly, Tavernier. Just keep the ball and Hoban puts out that's good work run down the time run down the clock Kent it's another corner Kent will go across to the other flank to take this one and Burke oh Burke puts it into the hands of Lewis hopefully we're not going to concede but it looks like there's another chance Fuentes oh and a Cosgrove header straight into Alan McGregor's hands 20 seconds remaining surely Koulibaly and this will put us three points clear into second position McGregor has it Goldson as surely to be the full time whistle ref McGregor plays it long surely ref Barisic Burke come on referee and there is the full time whistle at Petodre I would say a good game an entertaining game and a Morelos penalty miss made it a little bit harder than it should have been for us. Good win. Pulls us three points clear. Nice victory, boys. So as you can see, guys, that victory pulls us three points clear of Aberdeen with a plus eight goal difference. It's definitely a two-horse race for that second spot. Now, it looks like first place is off. Our Celtic just don't seem to be losing any pace. They've only lost once this season. So we are three points clear of Aberdeen in second space. Okay guys, so it's Queen of the South next, away from home in the 5th round of the FA Cup. We're on a pretty good run. We have won 6 of our last 8 since that defeat against Celtic with 3 clean sheets thrown in there. What's going to happen guys, if we get to the Scottish Cup final, we'll play that as a live comp. If not, we will just rattle through all these games and we'll do an end of Season 1 review at the end. But who knows, we'll play it by ear and see what happens. As ever guys, thanks for joining me, James, from the Football Manager, WizKids, on The Revolution with Drinkers FC. Don't forget to sub or like the video if you do enjoy what you see. And if you don't, help, hit me up with some constructive feedback and tell me how I can improve. Follow us on Twitter at the FM WizKids and Facebook, the Football Manager WizKids. Thanks for tuning in guys, and I'll see you very soon for another episode of The Revolution.